Good evening. This is the 37th time I have spoken to you from this office where so many decisions have been made that shape the history of this nation. Each time I have done so to discuss with you some matter that I believe affected the national interest. A strong enough political base in the Congress to justify continuing that effort. As long as there was such a base, I felt strongly that it was necessary to see the constitutional process through to its conclusion. That to do otherwise would be unfaithful to the spirit of that deliberately difficult process and a dangerously destabilizing precedent for the future. But with the disappearance of that base, I now believe that the constitutional purpose has been served and there is no longer a need for the process to be prolonged. I would have preferred to carry through to the finish whatever the personal agony it would have involved. And my family unanimously urged me to do so. But the interests of the nation must always come before any personal considerations. From the discussions I have had with congressional and other leaders, I have concluded that because of the Watergate matter, I might not have the support of the Congress that I would consider necessary to back the very difficult decisions and carry out the duties of this office in the way the interests of the nation will require. I have never been a quitter. To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body. But as president, I must put the interests of America first. America needs a full-time president and a full-time politician. Would almost totally absorb the time and attention of both the president and the Congress in a period when our entire focus should be on the great issues of peace abroad and prosperity without inflation at home. will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. I recall the high hopes for America with which we began this second term. Yes. But in turning over direction of the government to Vice President Ford, I know, as I told the nation when I nominated him for that office 10 months ago, that the leadership of America will be in good hands. In passing this office to the Vice President, I also do so with a profound sense of the weight of responsibility that will fall on his shoulders tomorrow and therefore of the understanding unity as a great and as a free people. By taking this action, I hope that I will have hastened the start of that process of healing which is so desperately needed in America. And some were wrong. They were made in what I believed at the time to be the best interest of the nation. To those who have stood with me during these past difficult months, analysis have been concerned with the good of the country. However, our judgments might differ. So let us all now join together in affirming that common commitment, not completing my term, but with gratitude for the privilege of serving as your president for the past five and a half years. These years have been a momentous time in the history of our nation and the world. They have been a time of achievement. We must keep as our goal, turning away from production for war and expanding production for peace so that people everywhere on this earth can at last look forward in their children's time if not in our own time, to having the necessities for a decent life. Here in America, of 
high achievements while daring greatly. I pledge to you tonight that as long as I have... One of them, the President Nixon short his speeches, his last speech, it lasted just about 16 minutes. It was a speech with a great deal of grace. Uh, Harry, can you hear me? I can indeed, Howard. I thought his quotation from Theodore Roosevelt was uh, very impressive. It's an old favorite of his, and it's uh, part of the whole Nixon. 